Welcome back to our live show. Uh, my first guest is a real interesting guy, great actor on a hit show for Netflix called House of Cards, but uh, he's from right here in Manhattan. Uh, comes from uh, parents who uh, narrowly uh, survived the Holocaust. Interesting story, and uh, yeah. it's good to it's good to have him here. Michael Gill, what's up, buddy? It's good to be here. So doing? yeah, Michael. Uh, Michel. Michael works. <laughs> Michael works. But our announcer, Mike Bruschetti, was right in the sense we said Michelle because that's how that was your born. That was my given, given name, name yeah, until okay. until the Beatles came out with Michelle Mabel, <laughs> and that messed me up completely yeah. in school. Everybody was like, "What?" I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. So they just complained, and I just came home one day and said. Everybody call me Mike. That's it. And from well, the age of eight years it's old. It's America. Right? Yeah. What, um, so French describe... was your first language, right? Well, you, French was my first language. And I, because my parents grew up in France, they wanted to, us to have uh, names that could be translated in a bunch of languages okay. easily. Assimilation. That makes sense. You can move from country to country, and your name is, oh, Misha, or Michelle, or Michael. Easy. Especially in Europe. I mean, because it's like going state to state, so going country to country. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, so, describe uh, their Holocaust experience, your parents. What exactly happened? You know, my mom was six years old when she would hear those sirens go off and go down to the shelters, and the bombs would hit in Paris. Right. And my dad was 14. And uh, he was doing the same thing. They didn't know each other. The families didn't know each other. And that was... When did the, the Nazis march into Paris? 39. 39, yeah. 39 right? Yeah. Okay. So this was really... America was not in the war yet. No. No one knew if they were going to come in the war. Yeah. Yeah, and, and France was, just... was basically uh, a, a German state. Well, I mean. yeah, they collab some French collaborated with the Germans and, you know, gave a lot of Jews Quite up. Quite a and, few people, right? unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, um, right. and, and so the journey out of Paris into the countryside, right. hiding with family you know, diamonds in the heels of their shoes, you know, things like that, money hidden, sewn into lining, yeah. all that stuff to pay their way. Yeah. Uh, this, this is serious stuff. Like, my, my wife's mom is uh, Parisian, and she talks about the war all the time. It, it changed her life, yeah. of course, and she still feels affected by World War II. Well, I mean, it was it, it's pure evil coming in and saying, listen, we're going to kill you and take everything you own. Yeah. Not necessarily in that order. But, yeah, that, that's basically what's going to happen. And some people couldn't believe, obviously, s too many people could not believe. Yeah, because it's not the Dark Ages. The, the, the craziest statistic about the Holocaust is it was only 70 years ago. It's yeah. not like, you know, the days of Vlad the Impaler yeah. or medieval times. <laughs> this was, I mean, my grandfather fought the war, yeah. you know. Yeah. There's direct connections. So you know, we uh, haven't changed much in certain areas of the world. Clearly, it's is, just the same thing that's over and over. Scary People are constantly trying to cleanse yeah. and get rid of and, and genocide. So I hope we figure, uh, you know, what, uh, what I would like to think civilized world figured out how to not have that happen again. But it's the fact that it still happens with human beings is scary. So your mom was six, and my what mom about, was six. What my about dad your dad? Was, yeah, he was fourteen, and uh -huh. so he had really he'd become a real Frenchie at that right. point. Um, and they were both from Russian parents, so they both spoke Russian um, and French. And uh, wow, yeah, okay. it was now was there any chance of them getting help on that side of it, since the Russians were? Oh allied, my God! Yeah. No, they were told not to come back because the programs, everything. It was just a mess. They so were, how do you get the yeah, Russian? How do you get there? And when you get there, what? And then of course, look, they were on our side, and thank God because that's what beat Hitler, trying to fight them and us. But Stalin, he's not exactly a stable guy. To yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, don't worry about it. Stalin will be fine to us. That's that's a guarantee. <laughs> he did his share yeah, of you no, know, my, knocking my people God, yeah, yeah. It was a mess, and it yeah. was a scary time. And my grandparents, you know, they walked out of Russia in 1924 when Lenin was, uh, when he died, and so right. they didn't look back either. It was just that part of the diaspora, the the whole journey, the exodus to safety and assimilating. You know, you always went, set in, felt comfortable, and then boom, had to go off again. So where do they go? So my parents, uh, my both of them ended up in Portugal. Okay. Um, my mom in 1941 was on a bit, a little ferry boat, basically. She celebrated her eighth birthday mm -hmm. on the boat and came to Ellis Island and was welcomed into New York City. My wow. father was in 1940, the same thing. With who? Her parents? Wow. Or? Her parents. Okay. Her parents and her sister. And my dad was with his mom and dad. Uh, and it took them a year to get to Portugal yeah, from France. They were all just on this big journey to get the heck out. And they had Man. to, you know, they they stayed in, in houses for months at a time. And, oh, wow. And then when it was safe. So they never knew that they would have to go that far. And also getting the papers and the visa papers was a, took a, quite a, t a time. And who do you trust? Nobody. You, I mean, that's the thing about it. You could be dealing with people 
who are telling you they're going to get you the right papers for months and months and months, and then you don't know if they're going to f you over or you know if it even gonna, it's they're going to work. Well, I found out something fascinating last year. A cousin of mine who's now 75 years old and lives in Boston, whose both his parents were deported and killed, and right. was given as an infant to part of, uh, members of the family. He told me when I visited him, he said, you should look at this website. And I went to the website. It was a, a guy called Sousa, a, a Portuguese guy who lived in France because he was the ambassador to Portugal and who managed to get 30,000 people out of Europe, wow. 10,000 of whom were uh, Jews. And so I looked on the website and started looking down, and his great-great-grandson has created this website. The guy's been honored post posthumously by the president, by Israel. And I'm looking down the list, and I find my father wow. and his mom and dad on wow. that list. No kidding. So he, he saved them. Saved my part of his thirty thousand. Yeah, man. So I, that I, gives I you chills. I could not believe it. That gives you. Oh. Did you get chills when you saw that? I have them right oh, now. Yeah, I exactly. mean, it was just extraordinary yeah. to find that that way for. And so I looked again for my mom. They had been dealt with differently, but this was extraordinary. A great finding for Absolutely. me. Absolutely. Wow, my God. Well, and it also helps give you closure on some level, too, about what yeah. happened. Yeah. Now, were your uh, mother and father um, part of wealthy families from France that were really stolen from, or was it middle class, or you know, was there a middle class? Middle, yeah, I don't know what it, you yeah. know. <laughs> they were from families who thought they were royal. Uh -huh. You know, this is, you know, weird stuff. I mean, right. they were down-to-earth people. But my father and mother had different things. You know, you were in, in, in Russia learning French literature, intelligentsia, uh, because you were very educated and all yeah. that stuff. So they came from educated families. Right. Um, and, and that gave a certain sense of entitlement at that point. But my... F but they all worked really, really hard as well. And on my mom's side, her father had a factory in Paris, and he would make ingots wow. and copper and stuff and traded... Oh, wow traded metals and right. um, and on my father's side his stepmother was a teacher and father was just um, an engineer yeah. so they came from different kind my father's family settled in the Bronx okay. um, and my mom's family settled on Central Park West oh okay. well, there you go <laughs> so there a, you go there's a difference yeah. yeah there is a difference so cut to 18 some odd years later and you come along you're born so I'm born in 1960 right first generation two three sisters but two before me. Uh, um, we're born here. Uh, my father's working for my mom's dad at this factory in France. We moved there for a year when I'm little, 63. Kennedy gets shot. Um, yeah. You know, that little thing. And my father, you know, learned a lot from my grandfather, but really felt that um, he was a bit of a gambler and would lose everything, and he couldn't bank on that uncertainty with his family. Really? Yeah. No so, kidding. Yes. <laughs> and, and he was lucky enough. Uh, in 1964 to win the French lottery. No kidding. Wow. <laughs> that, that, right? that, what an interesting story, yeah. So, <laughs> he, so he wins this lottery and uh, decides to leave my grandfather and open his own office on Wall Street. Man. And start trading, because he had a seat on the commodity exchange, and just went his own way. And he had a good nose. It's not what he wanted to do, but he just was good at it. So he wins He wins the, the really big life lottery, being on that list of 30,000. Yep. <laughs> And now he wins a money lottery. Yeah. And he, so you're now in a position where you can sort of pursue what you want to in life, maybe a little bit like acting and something like well, that. Well, you know what? The strange thing was when I finally decided to go to college, my dad really did not want me to be involved in business. Okay. Because he knew what the dark side of business was. And right. he didn't want me to get involved in a backstabbing Competitive. So you got in the show business. So I got the show business. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I want, to talk, I want to talk more about that. We got to take a break, okay, but sure. obviously, a uh, fascinating story, and we'll talk more with uh, Michael Gill after this. The Artie Lang Show, weeknights on Audience, only on Directv.